Right guys, so sorry about the audio. This is an off the cuff video. Um, didn't bring my filming gear, so it's just the camera audio. So anyway, I'm gonna flip the camera around. This is what we are doing today. We are um, retrofitting this under the stairs space to have another door to the right of that door, okay? So we're just putting a little door in there. But we are thinking the best way to do that is remove this whole panel first. So that's what we're gonna do, we've assessed it. And there we go, we're leaving that framework in, so we're just removing this part all the way down. Start afresh, this door's not gonna get touched. At the end, we are gonna be sanding back everything for the customer anyway, giving it a little bit of a fill as well and making it all ready for painting for her. So I'm gonna remove that panel now. It's gonna get the chisel in at the back. I've cut this line with a standing knife. Basically, I've just made sure that we've just cut that back so there's a, a gap between the two so we're not breaking this piece off. I'm just gonna release the panel, which is this, which is basically tongue and groove. This is how it's made. With a three mil hardboard, four mil hardboard. So we're just gonna get that off. I've got my chisel in there so I know it comes off. Like that, I'm just gonna carry on and just take that off the chisel. Hopefully it's just nailed on. There it is. Lovely, that's exactly what I wanted. Well, easy peasy. Wasn't expecting that. There you go, nice and clean, a nice clean break. Yeah, so these boards are running past this floor down, otherwise I would have just levered them up from the bottom. So I'm gonna make a quick cut. Doesn't matter how high, maybe about 50 mil high, 100 mil high, Sean's going to get the Jigsaw, make a cut all the way down, then we can just lever the boards up, get rid of all of this and get back to the framework. Said of that arc tray for the top. Hey, hey, an old piece of dunno. Just in case you want to know how to say that in Spanish. Oh. <laughs> that one's going to be tricky. We'll have to get the Amir. Days, I think we can give this a little hoover. Right, so let's try that in. Hopefully, we've got our three mil ish at the top which if we can still see light shining through and we need to do anything, we can put a piece of timber or a strip in there. But there we go. Just getting our lines lined up. We've left nine at the bottom because we want there to be enough room between the floor and the door. So if there's any stones or anything, any dust or dirt on the floor, it won't hamper the door opening. We've got a three mil gap there. So now we've got the frame behind. We simply, oh, now that falling. All right, if you hold that simply going to mark the frame behind you're gonna get a pencil line right there draw that pencil line in i've got the shakes here yeah it's gonna draw that in all the way down to the bottom and then we can take it off because we do need to then cut the strip that's the next stage just cutting the strip off all right so we just cut that piece off going by our line so that piece should match up with the door exactly once it's pinned onto the frame and the door is hung. That's the idea, so we're gonna bring those pieces in. I'll bring that piece in. Sean, you can bring the door in. 
So yeah, the reason we're going for inset hinges, so inset hinges are the ones where the, the hinge has got a bit kicking. Um, because if we need to adjust this door in and out, there's no frame behind. That's our reasoning. If we went for overlay, our door would have been here over the frame behind. And if we had to adjust it in and out, there's limits to how far we can go because obviously the frame at the back. So we've gone for inset hinges. The door can adjust in and out as far as we need it. Um, just in case there's any twists or anything being an old wall and out everywhere. So yeah, we're gonna just line this up. We can maybe just tack it for now with a couple of pins to make sure we're happy. And then we can start hinging this, get it hung. Right, I've tacked it on for now. Just a pin at the top, pin at the bottom. And this door needs to be pushed in, but you can see there's a bit of a gap here. The reason I've tacked it on is because I can now pack this out. I can just lever it out, get a packer in there. And when I'm happy, I will finalize it with some screws. Um, yeah, we're gonna hinge this door now. Sean's getting the hinge cut, so we're gonna get three hinges on that, I believe. Um, also, when you've got a door that is inside the frame and it's angled, we're gonna have to take that corner back here. You'll see that a little bit later, but we're gonna take a bevel off of that corner to uh, make sure that opens, otherwise the back of that tip is gonna catch in the frame. Right, so I've done that already. I used the handsaw, you can see the angle that I've gone out. If I tip it up, you can see a little bit better also. So come down about 50 mil from the tip down on both angles, both lines, leaving about a three mil tip thickness there. Then all I just need to do is give that little edge of sand up. Um, I use the hand saw to do this, but you can use a block plane um, to do it if you're not handy with a saw, but that's what you will need to do. I give it a light tickle with the sander. Also going to go around all the edges, take the arises off, sand the face. And just make sure you just take those arises off once you've sanded the edges. Put a nice round over it. Not massive round, but just enough with PC40. Like so. Okay, so I put the door in place and it's where it wants to be and we're just working out where these hinges will be so usually we come down 100 but if it was 100 it would be about here and it would be a nightmare to get those screws into the frame so we're dropping it down to 150 that's what we usually do with angles then the bottom one is 100 up and then we'll just put the middle one in the center of the two so that's what we're going to do we come three mil from the edge to the start of the 35 mil hole. That should be absolutely fine. Okay, so we've got this hinge cutter bit, all right? And it's a 35 mil. And Sean has already marked on the lines. So there's our three or four mil tolerance, the edge to the start. It's, it's generally about four, realistically. Um, three to four. Yeah, basically we're coming in about 22 mil from the edge to the start of the hole. And when you're drilling, drill to the flat part of this hinge. That is a stopper, that is a guide. Let's go ahead and drill these out. Let's see if we can do it the cordless. We drilled out really easily, about three or four minutes and they're done. Sean's just setting up these hinges. Okay, so we're just taking out these little Euro screws. We don't use them, they come with the actual hinge. We go for GTV, soft close. Leave links in the description for you. Um, so he's just adjusting them all back and centralizing that grub screw um, also. And um, yeah, give us a good chance to adjust it right at the end. And we'll just go ahead and screw it on with some wood screws. Okay, so these are in and a little trick. So who's to say if they're squared up to your door? Simply just get a straight edge and push them up against both. And that should square them up for you. Hold that down while you're putting a 20 mil screw in. Just use 20s just make sure that your 20s are 20 because they sometimes come out come in a little bit longer should be absolutely fine four by 20 screws we're going to pump those into those holes job done this is what your door should look like the angle at the top remember 150 mil down what we need to do is find the distance from the front of the door to the start of that hole Okay, and then we're gonna mark that distance on the frame. Um, then we're gonna play, put it in place and get our heights also. We're gonna put a pencil line here, here and here. Stand the door up on edge and mark those lines onto the frame too. So we've got a cross here. 
We've got 55 mil from the door face to the center of the hole. Okay, so bear that in mind. The distance is 55 mil from this front face of this trim. Remember, this is where it's been hung off this frame. So we want the door to be flush with this piece. 55 mil back, strike your line where each hinge will be. Now we need to get the heights. To get your height, just put your door in place onto those spacers that you had before and just square across the centers of your door and that should give you a line across in the heights and you would have marked your line across there. That way you can then just put your door in place and just pump your screws into those lines that you've just drawn on. Okay, ready to go on this. As you can see, that line is striped on. If we can move this back, you can just see it a little bit better. So we're just gonna flap that in place, push it to where it lines up center and put those screws in because we've rested it on those packers from earlier. Okay, I used 30 mil screws on this because we had a nice chunky frame to screw into. So if you've got thicker material, use bigger screws but make sure the heads aren't bigger than fours. Um, yeah, so now I'll just continue to just pump these ones in. Once that's done, I'll adjust the grub screws. We look round here, the door is touching the frame. So we need to wind this hinge out, which is this first grub screw, okay? So we need to split the, the hinge part from the plate, like so, which is this. So we're gonna wind that to the right, put your drill, make sure it's clockwise mode, and just wind that. I'm gonna go all the way so the grub screw is flush with the hinge, and then we can work our way back. Okay, so the space is taken out at the bottom. I've moved my sheet. And it's, remember, it's been wound back. So let's see how that sits in that space once it's closed. Not so bad. We've got a smaller gap than I expected here. So we need to move that over and we need to lift it up a fraction here because we've got about five more gap in between. If I turn this light off, you can see a little bit better. There we go. So we're gonna lift it up to lift it up. You just simply release the screws holding the plate on, on all six, all six screws, lift it up, tighten it back up, and it needs to come out as well, so I'm just gonna do those grub screws once more that I did before. So that's adjusted a little bit better, so now all I really need to do, tweak this because I know where that is now, just bring that trim, that post forward to be flush, and as you can see the floor is not an even gap, and it's not flush here, so we need to get a bit of framework to take this we're thinking of just putting a piece of timber in there to support that panel and to bring the door out where it needs to be so i'm happy that's all adjusted now i've put a screw in three places on that sort of like column piece and that door is well adjusted i do need to put a clip on this at the end of the day which i will do put the handle back that's all been sanded back now sean is working on that timber and then we're going to work on that panel but in the meantime i am working on the skirting I'm now just simply going to take a mark from where the start of the gap is. So, like that. Do need to carry that gap all the way across. Remember, this is an opening door. Um, so, I need to allow nine mil. I've allowed nine. So, basically, I want to carry that gap. I don't want to have a nine mil gap and then just on the door and then have those bits lower. Just think it would just look nice if it was all the same. So that's what I'm gonna do, nine mil packers. And once I've cut that, I can work my way across. That piece there had to have the angle on as well. So I've cut that too. So they've both got 45 degree angles and the door now, and the door now opens as it should, which is great. Filled the holes, screwed it from the front. This one was screwed from the back. Now I'm simply just going to get this piece here, place it in and do the same here. Just a little section here. Sean's got another piece in there, so we just added another piece of timber. Got that piece in to support, and that is a door stop, and then that's going to support this side of the panel. And he's got another one there, so we can just screw that panel on once it's cut. He's just working out the scribe now. So another angle on the little column piece there, because there's going to be an angle on this. This is a door, so you need two angles. Square cut, square cut, 
where it's just the door opening and closing up against the frame like so yeah so another angle on there but i'm going to cut it square there the rest of the square cuts from that point on angle square let's get that done so there we go we're all finished on this um, project it took us about four hours it was just a matter of taking that wall down starting again rather than modifying what we had then we cut that whole panel didn't we placed it in and ripped a strip off it so it was the same piece off of that whole piece rather than a separate piece just so they lined up nicely um, didn't really worry too much about the bottom because we knew the skirting was going to cover the bottom gap but we left a nine mil at the bottom give or take a few mil we carried that so eight nine mil gap along the bottom some people do drop these down to the floor and just have the notches where the door is opening but i just think it's a bit more seamless here and um yeah we sanded this wall and filled it got a bit of filler here that needs to be sanded but it's a bit wet so we're just going to leave that to dry but um yeah it was just getting that door in and then just carrying along with the skirtings just making sure that you have a miter on both sides and if you can get away with a 48 mitre rather than 45, it just gives you a better swing of the doors. And as you can see, this opens nicely. And that's this one. So, yeah, really, really happy it's all worked out. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, like and subscribe. Join our membership. Take it easy. See you in the next one. Ciao for now.